So as you can see, the kitchen that we pretty much finished building last week is no longer in here. And that is because this week is another one of those weeks where we have a pretty big to-do list that we need to get finished before we actually put in the kitchen. These are some things that we probably should have done earlier, but we didn't. Or things that just came up when we were building the kitchen. Little things that we just have to get done because afterwards we won't be able to reach it anymore if the kitchen is actually bolted in. So let's get started on this massive to-do list. carried this side of the kitchen back in here for if not the hopefully one of the last times there are two more things that we have to do for this side one of which is that on this side the kitchen is kind of standing into the door which means that we need to have a back plate for it so that you can't just like look into the kitchen from the back but it just looks like there's a wall there so we have to attach this wall we already prepped it and painted it so it just pretty much needs to go in and then also as you can see this beam does not have any paneling or anything which obviously isn't the prettiest so we just need to figure out how we are going to cover this and if we need to do that before we put in the kitchen or if it's something that we can do afterwards so we'll get going on those two things and hope that we run through them quickly this basically and then the one on the side just has to get thinner and thinner so we think we figured out how we are going to frame the door and we are going to end up doing that after we put the kitchen in because it's not something that we need to do right now. And also the panel that we have for the back of our kitchen fits in there nicely but there is still a little gap that you can look inside if you look at it from a certain angle. So we're going to figure out how we are going to cover that just so it looks a bit more decent. But for now we're just going to put in that panel and then we might actually be ready to screw that part of the kitchen in. So So to close the gap between our the back wall of our kitchen and the van itself, there is about a centimeter or something. And a couple of years ago, I found these like foamy snake boys that you can just basically jam into the into the gap to close it up. And then if you want to have like a outwards facing like nice finish. You can just silicon over this and then make a nice finish. So that's what we're gonna do here. So now while we wait for the glue to dry on that side, we are going to start worrying about this side. On the side, we also don't have a frame for our window. We have already thought about this and the thing is that we want to put lines here that are relatively easy to open and close since we do want to be able to close them quite often and don't want to have the hassle of having to take off full-on blinds and put them back. So what we did is we bought these blinds from IKEA and we're going to test out if these even fit in there and then we need to figure out how we will also frame this window and same as on the other side if we need to do that before we put in the kitchen or if we can do it afterwards. One more thing about this side is that we kind of messed up when we put in the walls because we didn't really measure out this one. We just put it in and it's kind of covering the window a bit. So we will need to have to take off part of this wall just so that we can use as much of the window as possible. So that's going to be our next two steps. I mean, it's 
gonna end up being a three or four part frame. An oh, inner frame for the for the window. The upper part over the boy. This. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We could also just felt the whole thing. The uh, window as well. No. Which would make it really easy. I mean, framing will be a pain in the ass if we do wood. Yes, and the thing is, I'm not, like, I'm not 100% a fan, but I'm also not against it. We're just kind of like, why don't we just make our lives easier for once? Just framing felt wood. it. Fun. Especially with, like, the weird day. curvature of that. That side is okay, but that side is going to be fucking wild. So we've made some decisions. First of all, we are going to felt the back of this and not make a frame because it just seems a lot easier and doesn't look that terrible, but that's also something that we don't need to do as of right now. We also decided that we're not going to cut off most of this wall. We're actually only going to make a cutout where our countertop is sitting because another thing about the side is that the countertop obviously ends here and our window is back here. So we need something in between these two so that all of our stuff like food and water and stuff doesn't get down here. So we're going to use more of the wood that we have for our countertops and just make an extension for back here. And since the window is further to this side than the wall is, we want to make the countertop extension all the way into the window so that there's also not a hole back here. Which means that we either have to take off this wall up until there or what we're doing now is we are just going to make a cutout where the countertop will sit so that can go all the way back and we don't have to cut off too much of the wall because the probabilities of it being straight afterwards is probably none. We also think that we will use the shades from Ikea. We have to check at night if a lot of light comes out of it because we do want it to be non-see-through so we'll have to check that at night but other than that we are good to go with that one it's not all the way dark but dark enough for, to cast this out so this is the window without the shades down and that's with it down so that blocks basically all the light like i can i can tell there's light on but only if i do this <laughs> works and then we're also going to make a frame on the top here that covers most of the shade so that you can't see it when it's closed but then you can easily pull it out so to sum all of that up this side is going to be a mess no matter what but we're going to get started by cutting out this wall and then making the extension for the countertop and connecting these two so that this is like our base of what it's going to look like and then we're probably going to do the felting and worry about the shades later on. construction into our under construction we're not yet going to attach the countertop because we still need to sand and oil this but the general build of our kitchen we can definitely screw in so let's go but before we can screw it in we have two more things to do one of which is the beams that we have for our kitchen partially don't reach all the way back to the wall so we need to measure out how much space is in between there and then use some other pieces of wood that we can squish between them so that we have something that we can actually screw into and then into the wall. And then also, since we have our gas tank box in here, we can't really see anymore where the under construction beam is, but we can see it on the bottom because that's where the glue that we glued onto comes out of. So we need to draw onto the back where the beam is. To make 
sure that we are actually screwing this side in 100% correctly, we actually need to put back the other side of the kitchen because since we have a pull-out bed that we'll be pulling out onto both sides of the kitchen, they need to be standing in the same position to the back of our van so that they end at the same point and then our bed is straight and not like slanted or something. So we're going to carry the side back in, see if they line up in the back, and then we'll actually screw the kitchen in. of the kitchen is now officially screwed and glued in here so let's hope that we didn't forget about anything because this would be a pain in the ass to take back out so next we are going to finalize and adjust our toe kicks we made toe kicks in here which are flush with our couch so since our couch has less depth than our kitchen does we decided to just make this have the same depth at the end we made this flush with the couch when we did not have the wall on the couch yet. So now the wall of the couch is four millimeters, which means that this would have to have a four millimeter wall to make it flush again. We want this to have a thicker wall though, since it is a toe kick that you might actually kick and put your foot against. We don't want it to maybe break or indent or something. So we wanted to have a little bit of a thicker wood just to make sure that it's sturdy enough and doesn't fall apart. So we are going to put eight millimeter onto this, which means that we have to shorten the toe kick by four millimeters in depth, just so it aligns afterwards. So I'm just going to take off four millimeters off of both of these. for our kitchen sink so that we can hopefully fit the countertop in here one more time and start making the extension of it. I'm going to be working on our frame for the window. So like we said, we are going to be felting all of this and then on top we're just going to make one big slat that comes across here which will cover all of this up here and then also the blinds themselves so that you can't see them generally but then you can pull them out from underneath. So what we need here is two blocks that we're going to be drilling into here that have the same height so that our panel is on the same height as these two walls. And then we need the panel itself, which we will also be painting white. And I already took my measurements of how big everything is supposed to be. So now I'm going to see if I can find pieces of wood that I can properly cut to these sizes or that maybe already fit. long on one side but the height is definitely very good so I'm just going to take a little bit off of here probably test fit it again and other than that just sand and paint it so we can be putting this in once we're ready wooden 
pieces that I'm going to use to screw them in here and then glue the panel onto. These are three and a half by three and a half centimeter slap pieces, which already fit pretty well. It just needs to have a little bit of a slant. Since the wall is bent inwards, we need the one on the top to also kind of bend inwards. So I'm probably just going to... I don't even know how I'm going to do this. I'm probably going to just draw on where the curvature is here and then just try and make them kind of the same. It's time for us to felt the rest of our window frame. We're gonna use the same felt and technique as we used in our main felting video. And we'll see how it goes and how it looks in the end. Now that that is done, the only thing left is the only thing. The only four things left is installing the two wooden blocks to hold our shade and the cover for the shade. And then install this panel over it and then we're pretty much done with this window. So in the end we decided to make our lives a little easier as has been our decision process a lot lately. Um, we're just gonna take three self-tapping screws and then literally just put them inside of this beam and then that should hold. I was scared there for a second. So besides us almost getting the thing stuck in the midst of that, that actually worked pretty well and our thought process was literally what is the easiest way to put this in here without you being able to see that from the outside. And then we just looked at an old video where we didn't have all of our insulation and stuff in here to see what is behind here and if we can screw into that and it looked fine. So we just decided to try it out and it worked. So next we're going to add the blocks of wood onto the top which we're going to glue our panel onto and we actually think that we're also just going to glue that. The plan originally was to screw it into these holes but for some reason the screws are quite expensive because they need to be really long so we thought why not just try and glue it so that's probably what we'll be doing. Like Robin said, just taking the easy way out at this point. finish this whole thing off we're just going to glue on the panel. happy with how our framing turned out like obviously there's probably ways that you could have made it look neater or whatever but for the circumstances of this being like wild construction I think it looks pretty good so I'm very happy with that now that Robin is done perfecting the cutout for our sink we're going to hold everything back in here and we might actually screw everything together because we've had this issue that if we put the countertop on top, 
it's wobbly so it always has like a one centimeter gap on either side so we don't really know if it would still be straight if we just screw it together or where the problem is like what is wonky so we might just test fit everything and then also measure out where our extension has to go just so that is in the correct place where it will be once it's screwed together so we're probably just going to do like a proper test fit and see if everything fits in here or if we need to make some adjustments and then also get going on the extension for the back so to test this out we're first going to put screws into the front through our slat and then in the back we're probably just going to be using 90 degree angles and then screwing both into our plates and into our countertop. So we right now only have three screws in here, but it already pulls it tight pretty nicely so there's no more gap in here and also our sink is no longer movable so just by squishing it between the countertop and our slat and plate it's already pretty tight in there so I think this should work so now that we know that this is the actual position it's going to be in in the end we're going to worry about making our extension which is pretty easy we're just going to cut another piece of our countertop wood glue it to this one and then we can just put the whole thing in as a whole but we won't bore you with the details of that so we will see you once that is done Be whoop. per usual we got a little bit sidetracked and started doing things that weren't actually on our list but at least we're making progress so that's all I can ask for there are still two things left on our to-do list, which are oiling up our countertops. Oiling them helps prevent staining and also scratching, so we want to make them obviously as waterproof as possible since our sink is undermounted, so if water gets in there, it's gonna look pretty ugly. So we need to do that. The second thing revolves around this trash can. So on the side of our kitchen that also has the sink, we originally wanted to make four walls and then have three compartments. One is the fridge and then two different ones that can be covered. The sink ended up being so big that the cupboard next to it would only be like this small, which doesn't really make that much sense. So we decided to leave it at three walls. So just the fridge on one side and then the sink with all of the cupboards underneath on the other. And on the side that has the cupboards, our trash can is going to go in the bottom of that. And then the next dilemma we had is that if you have a big drawer, which one side is the trash can, what do you do with the rest? Because it's kind of gross to always have to pull out your trash can if you want to like reach your utensils or your toiletries or whatever. So we decided that we're going to make a little box type thing around the trash can so that we have another wall that is only about the height as the trash can next to it so that we can put smaller drawers into there and then bigger ones on the top. So we're going to make the drawer for the trash can first so that we know how big this actually is. And then we're going to build a wall next to it and a connecting wall on top just so it has something that it's holding on to. And then we're going to make the other cupboards on the other side of that. So that is why this is a whole ordeal. So we're going to start by making a little pull out thing for the trash can. We're only going to make the walls probably about like 10 centimeters high because you don't really need to box it in all the way since there's not really any place it can go. So we're going to start by making the drawer and then we'll hold it in and see where the walls will go. Okay, so to make the drawer of our trash can, we're going to use mostly scrap that we have, because why not? Um, we're just basically going to encase the entire thing in like wooden slats so it fits nice and neatly and put a, bo uh, put a bottom on the bottom. And then we're going to make a nice faceplate, put that on the front, 
that's basically it. Shouldn't be too hard, honestly. Just precise measuring and gluing again. One hour later. So we now have our four wooden pieces to make the frame that our trash can is going to sit in. And we made some little indentations so that we can make wooden connections just because first of all it's fun and second of all it's just a little bit more stable. Continuing with the whole using scrap thing, we are going to use two 4mm MDF plates as the bottom part of our drawer, so the thing that our trash can is going to sit on. We're just going to cut these to size and then glue them together and use them as the bottom. gonna put it all together to look a little something Oop. like this okay so it's finally time to finish up our countertops by oiling them we're gonna be using this hard oil, which is a specific type of lin oil that in the process of making it was like heated up to a specific temperature. But um, this is basically the best oil you can, or the best finisher you can use for um, countertops or generally woodwork that sees a lot of wear as it makes the surface quite hard. You basically just use a rag sponge or a brush to evenly apply the oil to the surface let it soak in for about 20 minutes 20 to 30 minutes and then you do that two or three times for the first time finishing up a wood and then you should probably go back once every year to refinish the surface just to make it all nice and clean again if you have blemishes in it you can always go and go ahead and sand it down and then reapply the oil. I'm gonna first clean it up with a like slightly wet um, rag and then we'll go ahead and apply the first coat of oil. Maybe choose a sponge that doesn't start disintegrating on you, like mine did. Before I move on to the next one, I just wanted to show you a comparison between the already oiled one and the one that is just sanded down. The oil does indeed change the color a little bit, even though it should be pigment free. It just enhances the natural color of the wood you buy. In our case, it made it a lot more like caramely, caramely, car caramel, car caramel, caramel's a bitch. No, chrome is delicious. Um, <laughs> yeah, just wanted to show you this before I move on to the next one. And now I'm gonna give this one two more goes and then completely oil up the second one. And then we will move on. So that concludes our massive to-do list for the week. We didn't quite finish the trash can situation because we only made the frame that it's going to sit in and not the actual dividing walls, but that is just a matter of taking two plates and putting them together. So I'm going to give that check mark to us. And we accomplished everything on here and also things that weren't actually on the list. So I would say that was a pretty successful week of our van build. And I hope that it continues like this the next week and the weeks after that. So we will see you next week for hopefully making our kitchen a bit more functional by actually making our appliances work. <laughs> see you then. Bye. Oiling them helps prevent staining. Huh? <coughs> Shut up. Sorry. The drawer. Okay, so to make the drawer of our 
trash can. Jesus Christ. Okay, so. <laughs>